devil never cry. Welcome to the next installment in a series of guides for Final Fantasy 16. In today's video, I'll be taking you through Final Fantasy mode, and by extension, New Game Plus. What exactly is this mode? What does it change? And why should you choose to play through it? All will be answered in this video. If you're interested in more guides and content for Final Fantasy 16, then subscribe, as there's plenty more on the way. Alternatively, if you're looking for more combat-focused guides, then check out my previous videos. With all that said and done, let's dive right in. Final Fantasy Mode is FF16's attempt at a hard mode that is exclusive to New Game Plus. Once you beat the main quest of Final Fantasy 16, a clear game save file will be created, upon which you'll be able to boot up New Game Plus from the game's main menu. Alternatively, you could just load up that clear save file, allowing you to essentially be put just before you tackle the final quest, allowing you to continue on in that world, and sweep up any remaining extracurricular activities that you didn't get done before the main quest, such as finding all the orchestrian roles, any of the chronolith trials, or any of the side quests that you just missed out before finishing the game. You'll also still be able to tackle any of the stage replays and the training mode and the arcade mode if you want to hop in on those as well. So fret not, if you missed out on anything the first time through, you'll still be able to go back on that very same save file and pick up where you left off. But let's say you decide to skip all of that and go straight on to New Game Plus. Well, there's a few things that you need to know. The first of which is that your weapons, your gear, your accessories, any items that aren't key items that you've picked up, things like orchestrian roles, your currency, your icons and iconic skills, all of those will transfer from New Game on to New Game Plus. When you choose the New Game Plus option from the main menu, the game will ask you to load a clear game save file, and it will take all of your statistics and everything that I've just mentioned from that very save file. And so if you want to have everything done on 100% completion on one save file, I suggest you do as much as you feasibly can on New Game on that one save file before transferring on to New Game Plus. It's here that you'll also have the option to continue New Game Plus in your standard action or story focused mode, or if you want to carry on New Game Plus in Final Fantasy mode. If you do decide to take on New Game Plus in Final Fantasy mode, take note that you won't be able to change the difficulty once you start. The first thing to note about this mode is that the level cap has shifted from level 50 from your initial playthrough all the way up to level 100. And as an added addendum to that, Enemy levels have also increased quite sharply. When I first started New Game Plus, the very first enemies that I fought were level 50. Not only that, despite the fact that Clive and the enemies he was facing were of a similar level, they seemingly did a lot more damage than they would have done in standard New Game. Alongside the sharp increase in level and enemy damage output, you can expect to see a lot of endgame enemies appear far, far earlier in places that are quite unexpected. And this change, the fact that they're remixing enemy encounters, can turn somewhat of a standard, quite docile encounter into something far more dangerous and lethal. Particularly because the enemies that they do include in these encounters tend to be mini-bosses that can hit quite hard and will kill you if you're not careful. I should also mention that this increase in damage output does not extend just to enemies and mini-bosses, but also to bosses themselves. Despite the fact that I was adequately leveled and had decent enough defensive gear, there were a handful of times that bosses actually almost managed to kill me in just one attack, particularly those that hit multiple times and stop you from evading by staggering you constantly, or some large area of effect attacks, you know the ones that I'm talking about because the boss will spend ages prepping them, that if they touch you, can kill you in one hit. And so considering the amount of tools that the game gives you to dispatch enemies and bosses, or the amount of tools it gives you to evade or parry damage, I wouldn't necessarily say that this difficulty is incredibly crushing, but one that will make you think a whole lot more about your setup going into a fight, and of course what exactly it is you do in that fight, as you'll likely not be able to be as aggressive as you usually are. But before I diverge too far into a talk of difficulty, let's also talk about what else Final Fantasy mode has to offer, starting with Ultima Weapon. If you've played previous Final Fantasies of long since past, you'll likely recognize the name Ultima Weapon. It is the name often attributed 
to the best melee weapon throughout the entirety of the game. And of course, in some Final Fantasies, this weapon goes by other names, such as FF8's Lionheart or even FF6's Lightbringer. Though to distill it to a singular point, it essentially is the ultimate weapon. And in Final Fantasy 16, it is only craftable in the Final Fantasy mode. To craft Ultima Weapon, you'll need to find and procure some of the rarest materials out there in the game. Coincidentally though, you are guaranteed to procure all of the materials needed for Ultima Weapon by simply following Blackthorn the Blacksmith's side quest chain in Final Fantasy mode. Those who have already played Final Fantasy 16 and likely have started this side quest chain will know exactly what I'm talking about as it is nigh on unmissable. Alongside Ultima Weapon, you'll be able to craft a plethora of new weapons that essentially act as reforged versions of the ones that you saw in your initial playthrough. They typically boast far better stats and require material that you can only get from defeating bosses throughout the main story in Final Fantasy 16. This also goes for all defensive gear and non-unique weapons as well. You'll be able to upgrade them to a higher level, I believe up to plus four in New Game Plus, as long as you have all of the materials necessary. You'll also actually be able to increase all of the accessories that you have at your disposal. Typically, accessories can be found in treasure chests throughout the world of Valistia or in one of the sequestered away stages whenever you're facing off against some main story boss. And so the game incentivizes you to go out there and once more collect all of these accessories from these chests as Blackthorn is actually able to take these two accessories of the exact same type and he's able to combine them to create an accessory that is better than the original. As an example, the EXP farming accessory typically only gives you 15% extra EXP, but by upgrading it to plus one, by combining two of these, you'll be able to double this so that it gives you an extra 30% of experience as opposed to just 15. For those of you that employ the use of the timely accessories, the ones that help give you an edge and are essentially a part of story mode, uh, fret not as you can still use these in Final Fantasy mode. And last but certainly not least, we have to talk about Ultimaniac mode, which is exclusive to Final Fantasy mode's arcade mode. When you use the arcade mode feature in Final Fantasy mode, where you're able to go back and play through all of these specific stages with a ranking system in play, you'll be able to toggle through either Final Fantasy mode or Ultimaniac mode with the main caveat being that when you're in Ultimaniac mode, if you die, you have to restart the entirety of that arcade mode stage from the very beginning. And of course, you don't keep your score. I'll be putting together a follow-up video on Ultimaniac mode, particularly once I've put more time into the mode itself, but safe to say, I think they've cranked the enemy statistics up even further just for this mode alone. And with that, we come to the conclusion of this video. If you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe as there is more Final Fantasy content on the way. With all that said and done, it has been me, Devil Never Cry. I'd like to thank all of you for watching and as always, I'll see you all next video.